paid for. You guys want to join me for the Pledge of Allegiance? <laughs> sent an uh, email today, uh, which I thought was very well thought out, and she um, was asking if we would reconsider putting public comments um, back at the end as well as the beginning. Um, so I wasn't prepared to, to debate it, but I'll put the motion on. Uh, I move to uh, add a second public comment at the end of every meeting before adjournment. I second that. Any discussion? I just that? want to say that someone else had reached out to me and said that they were waiting to say something at the end of the meeting. It's the last one, and public comment wasn't really going to confirm that feedback also. So, mm -hmm. okay. I don't think it hurts us personally for you guys. I think it makes sense because they might have a reaction to what we just discussed or an idea. Or yeah, give the opportunity to support it. Right. So whether they want to sit through the whole meeting or whether they just want to come to the end meeting that week. Yeah. Yeah. Far out. Yeah. Anyone else? Mike? No? Good. All right. Good. Awesome. All right. So I'll repeat the question. Motion is to add a second public comment at the end of the meeting right before adjournment. All in favor? Aye. 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 Cool. So motion passes and we'll put it back in. We'll update the website. Very good. Democracy in action, yeah. Okay, good. Uh, so next order of business is to approve the minutes. We'll do these one at a time. Uh, so uh, can I have a motion to approve the April 6, 2022 meeting minutes? Motion to approve the April 6, 2022 minutes. Second. Discussion? So I have one thing. Uh, if we go to um, on page seven, I want to say. Yeah, page seven. Um, so H and I need to be transposed. Suzanne, so we've got strategic, we have strategic plan update, Dr. Klingerman, and Dr. Klingerman provides an update of strategic planning, but then everything under that, I think it's the principal stuff. And then okay. if you go to I, it says high school principal search update, and it says Dr. Klingerman provides the first update of the search process, but then everything under that is about the um, strategic plan. So I think the only correction we need to do would be to transpose the, the sub bullets between okay. H and I. And uh, so, why don't we defer to, uh, why don't we um, table this until the next meeting so we can vote on that? Is that cool? I think you can vote on it with the, with the changes that you just discussed it because it's just a typo and not a content. No problem. Sweet. Awesome. All right. So, uh, can I have a motion for that? Motion to approve the April 6th minutes with the correction of. The bullets under H and I. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 No. I don't know. Uh, okay. Uh, can I have a motion to approve the April 8th minutes, please? Motion to approve. Second. <laughs> Any discussion? Okay, one other, one just other quick typo to yeah, so we can vote on it. But um, your, yeah, your next meeting is May sixth, but the next meeting is May fourth. It happens, you know. But we don't want we don't want May to go by any faster than it already is. Right. So I'm gonna move. I'm gonna move to. Uh, I'm gonna move to approve the April eighth minutes uh, with the change of changing May sixth to May fourth. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, we're cooking with gas. Right along like that. Yes. All right. Okay, so next order of business is reports, and we will start with Dr. Klingerman. Hi, thank you. Good evening, everyone. I was just reflecting, I can't even believe that May is here, and we're going to be having so many end of the year events that are coming up in the next few weeks. But 
they will all be really wonderful opportunities for people to get back together in person. And I think I'll kind of tie that comment back in um, when I share that the strategic planning process is well underway. We had a nice meeting this morning with the planning team, and the planning team is the team that's comprised of all of our stakeholder groups, including parents, students, teachers, administrators, members of town board, and community members. So it's just a great opportunity to get together. Um, we discussed at our meeting how important it is to uh, prioritize having face-to-face -face discussions about our schools and priorities and what's working well and what are areas that we need to work out. Um, and I think that when we talk about social emotional learning in our schools and what that looks like, one of the really important aspects of social emotional learning that our teachers teach is perspective taking. And I think that as adults, when you have the opportunity to get together with the stakeholder groups and people that may have different beliefs politically, but when we get together and really talk about what we want for our schools, we're much less divided than anyone would think and we all just really want what's best for the schools, for the students, for the teachers. And I just think having opportunities to get together informally to have those discussions, and it doesn't have to be every three years or four years for strategic planning, but if we can plan more opportunities to get together and chat and prioritize that in the community, I think that we find that there's a lot less division than people may think. So I was just kind of struck by that when we were together today. Um, I just wanted to update the committee as well as the community that the principal search for the new DHS principal is well underway. Just a reminder, it's being um, led by the New England School Development Council. And it's Dr. Don Bodette, who's a retired superintendent from Norwell. So there's a lot of uh, self work connections with people that Dr. Bodette knows. Um, he's leading the search for us. Um, we're starting to get a lot of applications in. It started off slowly, and I think that as you see, as we get closer to May 15th when the posting closes, we'll start to get um, more applicants in because it takes a little bit of time for applicants for um, administrative roles to get letters of recommendation from three or four people. So sometimes you're waiting to get your letters in, and so that's why you don't really get a lot of applications right at the beginning. So I think we're in good shape. Um, this week was a big week because we had focus groups. So um, Dr. Bodette organized a focus group on uh, Monday morning with our administrative team where they gave their input. Then they had um, a staff focus group for the DHS staff after school on Monday afternoon. And then there was a parent focus group led by Dr. Bodette on Tuesday, um, as well as a survey that went out. Um, and so I think we'll probably send the survey. I don't know if we have time. Dr. Bodette is now kind of taking the survey results, the focus group results, and compiling a report of the characteristics and attributes that our community feels are most important. Um, did I say we met with the students this morning? Oh, yeah. That's the best focus group. So we met with the students this morning. Michael was there. Um, so we used the superintendent's advisory cabinet to get their feedback and input about what they'd like to see in the next DHS principal. And so they did a really wonderful job expressing themselves. So all of that will go into the report. So the screening committee will know they're not just coming at it from their own perspective. They're really looking for candidates that fit the mold of what the community felt were really important attributes for the next principal. Can I just ask, is that kind of, is that information then public in terms of what comes out of the focus groups and what that profile looks like? That's a good question. I don't know if that information is publicized beforehand or if it's the eyes of the screening committee first and then something that we could share after we have identified finalists, but I can find out if that's something we'll be posting um, the report ahead of time or if it's really geared towards the screening committee to have some have just some sense of what people are looking for so they're not just trying to figure it out with their own perspective. Um, did you include eighth grade parents or no? Eighth grade I think it's all that fresh for next year. I don't I'm not sure if the um, I think the survey went out to anyone who wanted to provide input. I didn't say anything for eighth grade parents. So we can put the survey back out again yep. from, from CP additional input. So we can address that. Okay. I can put it in um, I can send it to just eighth grade parents this week to wrap okay. up that feedback. That's a good okay. point and suggestion. Um, finally, I just I had shared with the school committee in an email last week, but I wanted to share with the community because I think there is sometimes interest in what the administrators and the teachers are doing profession, for professional development. So Monday we had a, uh, early release CD day, and I know some of the work was spent, um, I think it was uh, working with some of the TLA coaching. So when we talk about the TLA coaching, that's the Teaching and Learning Alliance. They have been coming in this whole year to work with our pre-K through 12 curriculum supervisors and teachers to make sure that we're doing everything we can 
to really maximize differentiating instruction and personalizing learning for each student. And so that's been continued work. I know the TLA uh, representatives have been coming in as a coaching model, uh, the train the trainer model, and they've been actively working in our classrooms. We observed a lesson in one of the classrooms at all the school this week where the students were doing a book discussion and learning how to talk about what they're noticing and wondering as they read and to enhance their comprehension. Um, the administrators, but the principal, Dr. Wilcox and I spent eight hours last, last week, which was a lot, long time, but we went to a great workshop run by the Department of Education and PNTP, which is the New Teacher Project, which is an educational research agency. And the workshop that we attended was really designed for us to have uninterrupted time to focus on our instructional priorities for next year, to be able to see that piece of our strategic plan because some of the action planning is really focusing on student learning and teacher development and teacher instruction. And so we spent time focusing on academic and personalized learning needs of our students. And uh, it was just great time spent uninterrupted where we could really have that information ready to move on the action planning for the strategic plan. So I feel like we're in good shape um, as administrative team to head into the summer so that we can have strong strategic plan, um, school improvement plan, goals ready to go for the fall. And the principals have shared that they are moving forward with selecting and um, advertising school council members to be able to have those councils established in June so that they won't be a delay in September waiting for open house nights that sometimes are towards the end of the month of September. So that's my update. Awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, and uh, the next item is Assistant Superintendent of MC, Dr. Wilcox. So I'm going to do the best I can to substitute for Dr. Wilcox. <laughs> All right. Well, we, we'll, we'll bring you after. All right. I appreciate that. Uh, so I'll take over with the recognize a colleague portion of Dr. Wilcox's report. So uh, first goes out to the Chandler staff for the efforts they did to make kindergarten screening a success, and specifically to Mary Duffy, Chris Campbell, Amy Burns, Amy Bruno, Kelly Powers. Kristen Thomas, Julie Connor, Mary Powers, Michaela Shea Kenny, Amanda Todd, Mercerny Smith, Jen Davenport, Sherry Sewell, Aaron Wallace, and Allison Zakta, and the entire Chandler Extended Day staff are uh, recognized by Principal Wiesenhan for their uh, all their efforts. And also recognition to Tim McPhillips, recognized by Margie Malone, Anna Zhu, recognized by Melanie Levine, and Susan Reiser and Megan Kelly, recognized by Sarah Milner for all their efforts. That ends the report. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. It is teacher appreciation week. All right. And so job. What we appreciate our Duxbury teachers very, very much. Um, and this is a week to honor them. And I hope that the community is remembering the most important thing for teacher appreciation week is just sometimes a note from a student or just a little bit of appreciation for their hard work. So we honor our Duxbury teachers and I hope that the community also is taking this week to do so. Thank you. You were almost at an eight o'clock. I'm going to strive to do better. You said that's it. We're all about a growth mindset. Here we go. All right. So, next order of business, or next report, excuse me, is the Director of Business and Finance. I don't know if anyone has anything on that because I was just saying. Uh, this really starts in June, right? May, May 16th. Oh, May 16th. Oh, cool. So, she'll be here for the next meeting. Oh, very exciting. That's great. Okay. Uh, uh, Director of Special Education, Mrs. Tucker. Um, so, a couple things um, just let you know that is um, the chaos to con presentation was on executive functioning on the 25th of April. That um, presentation is actually on the special education website. Um, we were able to record that. So for anybody who wants to be able to view that, we um, were very happy to be able to do that. Um, just so you know that on May 16th is the next CPAC meeting and it tends to be one of the most exciting ones because it's Excellence Award, where um, parents have had an opportunity all year long to nominate a special educator or, you know, just person working with their um, child, anybody within the school district. And so um, they acknowledge that. And so um, that's on the 16th at five o'clock. I'll be sending an email out with that information. Um, usually they bring the CPAC person, um, the CPAC co-chair and the uh, nominated or the, the winner um, comes to CPAC, so I mean to school committee, so I'm hoping that we can carve out a few minutes on the agenda on the 18th um, to bring forth. That's it's really kind of a special award and I um, just I love the fact that the CPAC has done that. It's been a long-standing tradition 
well before I've been here. And it, it, I just I, I think it's um, really meaningful to the teachers to be recognized for those efforts, especially coming off the heels of Teacher Appreciation Week. Um, so there's that. Um, just a, a couple of things. I know that the Sobel Girls has um, an event that is coming up, um, I think in the, that last um, May, I think it's the 20th. And then there's a program called Coastal Snap, which is almost like a unified sports um, across the South Shore. So um, I just saw something come around about Coastal Snap. So if you have a child that either wants to be a peer or an athlete, um, I recommend you just go check out. It's just a community opportunity. So anything that kind of comes across my desk, I like to try and share for the moment. Um, but not much this week. Thanks very much. Um, on the uh, the excellence award, do you mind if I Mike, do you mind if I say a couple things before we turn over here? So on the CPAC Excellence Award, I think we just have to decide when we want to uh, make that award, uh, when we want to deliver the award on what meeting. So we can do it on the 18th or we can do it on the 8th. Um, what do you guys think? It's awarded on the 16th at the CPAC meeting. Yep. Oh, but I thought that I thought we were doing so some they do it kind of through the CPAC usually does it um, there, but they also do it at the um, you know past past practice has been, and they also came to school committee. And yeah, I'm sorry. There. So they come to school committee so they, and then they get recognized on. on and I already right. know that. that they, yeah. I would think it seems well, to follow that if they do that on the 16th, that it would be September 18th. Yeah. Like right. So yeah. why don't we say the 18th with the June as a backup in case whoever is the recipient of the then that. Yeah. They don't know they're being yeah, awarded they again. Yeah, so yeah, I love like, that. No, that's what two days before. All right. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so we'll do we'll do the 18th and then the backup if we need to. Great. Okay. Great. Thank you so much for that. Oh, okay. it's a priority. Oh, no, it is a priority. That's great. All right. Uh, you've got uh, the load of two tonight. Uh, so the next item is uh, report from student representatives. All right. Uh, at Alden, students at the moment are learning about online safety and further today with their bike to school day. Uh, for the second year in a row, Duxbury High School's rowing team has won the annual Salty Bow Regatta at Field Cove against Hingham High School's Neighbor Academy. Duxbury High School's freshman and sophomore classes held a spring formal dance in which over 250 freshmen and sophomores attended. In the high school, the AP exam period started, uh, hopefully before school. Uh, our unified track team recently had a meet that went very well for our Dragons. Uh, Duxbury High School drama department is performing Little Women tomorrow and Friday. Evenings at 7 30 and the Black Box. Duxbury's prom is this weekend, which will be held at Lombardo's in Randall, and over 500 Duxbury juniors and seniors will be attending. And finally, uh, Ms. Sheehan told me to add this uh, nine Duxbury High School students, Shannon Downs, Ella Edwards, Luke Palago, Molly Funk, Faith Godin, Maddie Fogel, Daddy Fogel, Sophia Lee, and Jane Straven attended that diversity summer. Open Diversity Summit hosted by Weymouth High School. Our Duxbury High School students were joined by other students from across the state, including Aponiquit, Cohasset, Everett, Framingham, Hingham, North Windsor, Quincy, Silver Lake, and West Bridgewater. They attended workshops hosted by their peers and heard from a number of keynote speakers, including Senator O'Connor. Senator O'Connor extended an invite to the State House, and our students are hopefully going to hold something like this next year. And wow. that's all I got. That's awesome. really great. Thanks, Michael. That's great. Awesome. Um, okay. Oh, we, uh, the MCAS for this week, too, right? They're going on. Going they, on. They, well, they already did ELA, and then it was mass, mass this week. Just All the dropped my son off to school this morning, right before we left the car. He said, no, I can't wait for today to be over. Yeah. And then when I picked him up today, he said, I'm so glad the MCAS are over. It's tomorrow. Awesome. Yeah. 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 Sixth grade. No, no, I don't think it's sixth, sixth grade. grade. Oh, sixth grade. yeah. Thanks for the misinformation. I'm going to charge up this computer again. Okay, very good. Okay, uh, so I just, I just have a few items. One is I just want to echo uh, Dr. Clinton's sentiment about teacher, teacher appreciation. I mean, I know I speak for all of us when I say we truly appreciate our teachers and staff. Um, you know, for a lot of reasons right now in this country, you know, teachers are not given the uh, the, you know, the recognition that they really deserve. They have such an important job. They are taking care of the, the emotional and the academic development of our children all day long. I just can't think of anything that's more important. So I really do appreciate all of the work that our teachers and our staff do every day. It just can't be overstated. 
Um, a couple of other things. Uh, credit for life fair. I, I'm always like, I always have mixed emotions when the credit for life fair is up. Here, this is why. So one is it, the, the feedback that I always hear from you is just like exemplary. It's, it's real life skills around budgeting and you know, planning uh, and, and all of the things that you know, are sort of uh, feet on the street types of skills uh, that all of us need to know, right? And so the, it's, it's, it's vitally important. And I always hear that it's very well run, that the content is awesome. And the students that I hear from just tell me that they, they learn so much about it and they really, really appreciate it. That's what I love about it. What, what I, the mixed emotion is that I never get to go because I always like, I always miss it. And so um, I'd love to, I, I have to sort of double down on my efforts to get that sort of stuff on my radar before they happen. Um, I just think it's, it's really great and I can't wait to go to, to next year's one. So anyway, credit for life is great. Anything else you want to say? I, 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 I just, okay. Um, uh, agenda planning, I just wanted to remind you guys that, um, you know, uh, we're going through a couple of exercises, district-wide and school community-wide and wide around the goals. And those goals are essentially the way I look at it, like for strategic planning is three to four years, school committee goals are like a year. Personally, I also like to think about goals in sort of manageable bite-sized chunks, you know, like I always look at like two to four months or something. And so if there are things that are on your guys' minds around sort of short to medium term goals, I would you know really urge and invite you to let me know so that we can make space for them to talk about the agenda. So it's just a, an invitation out of here from my side. Uh, yeah, please go ahead. Agenda. So we worked on a draft of potential school committee dates. Kristen, Matt, and I last week. So perhaps we could bring the potential dates to the meeting because that's usually that's great. something we do at the end of the year just to make sure they're on the calendar um, for everyone here that their dates that are available. Yeah. I think that we have all Wednesdays at six, except we had one proposed Monday evening meeting because of the Jewish holidays in, um, I can't remember if it was September or October. So we can share those potential draft dates at the next meeting. Yeah, for sure. So that, I think that's great. Let's do that. Okay, good. Thank you. Um, school committee April workshop. I thought it was great. Um, that was what we, you know, we attended that on April 8th. And um, I'm really appreciative to Dr. Clinton for bringing it up as soon as the uh, elections happen. It's like to me, professional development is really important, but sometimes I forget. Um, and so I, I thought the time was really, really well spent. I had a, um, a little regroup with um, Dorothy Presser a few days, like a week after the meeting. And, um, you know, we just did a little bit of like a post mortem and what we thought looked really well. And a couple of the things that she recommended, because I always ask her, like, at the end, I always say, what, what am I not asking that I should be asking? And she said, well, there are smaller, shorter workshops. Um, and uh, she thought that it might be interesting for us to consider doing another workshop, maybe in the fall or something like that. And so one of them was uh, effective meetings, effective communication, superintendent evaluations, just you know, three that she named off the top of her head that she can do or another field director to do. And we skimmed the surface of those things, I think, in our in our workshop, but it might be interesting to spend, she said maybe two hours. So maybe a two hour workshop in the fall and we can dig deep on one of those things might be interesting. So I just wanted to put it on the guest with that. Um, website update. Uh, this is like the Academy Awards. I don't know who to thank first. But uh, I just wanted to thank um, Dr. Klingeman and her office for their support in uh, you know, the, the website uh, redesign. Um, that you know, I thought was really, really important to do and I was glad to, to you know, have the support of the district on that. Um, the, the packets themselves, I, I really, really love. And so I just wanted to make sure that Chris Cass Elizabeth Burns and Suzanne Hughes uh, are all recognized for the, the great work that they did um, to, to, to put this stuff together. It was um, kind of messy for the first go around, but we got it and uh, I really couldn't be happy with it. So thank you for that. Um, the, uh, the, the YouTube channel, I don't know if you guys saw, but on the YouTube recording, we have and I, this is Michael's idea. Like, it's not like I'm, I'm kind of glad Jake's not here because, like, I get to single you out. So, I was thinking that we would have to do playlists on YouTube 
to show little snippets of the meeting. But Michael was like, hey, old man, there's like, there's a, there's something that you can do that on YouTube, they're called chapters. So, um, so uh, Mrs. Hughes is uh, actually taking minutes down like of every line item on the agenda to make it easier for Chris Cass to get those chapters up on YouTube without having to scan the whole thing. So workflow and action. I really appreciate it. Thank you for doing that. That's awesome. A um, couple other things. Um, we're going to talk about uh, liaisons and a subcommittee today. But one of the one of the things that I just wanted to underline um, that I would encourage all of us to do is just to take a look at the NASC website from time to time. I was looking at it last week and I noticed that in February of 2022, NASC updated some of its policies on uh, harassment and discrimination. So, sorry. We we went over that. It, but no, we did we we did this before February. They actually updated some of the language in February. I thought I could be wrong. I I, I thought we voted on those because it was just one more change. Well, why don't we why don't we table it? I they 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 okay. actually put like some serious they, paragraphs and policies. So yeah, because they that. send out the um, bulletin to us. Yeah. So we did that after we did that? we did. Okay, good. So we're all updated. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you can check policies. Minutes, yeah. We, yeah. Okay. We voted on. We just added one word because all of our language was the same, but we added one word. Okay. It's escaping me now. Okay. So I have that brain. I know there was a word. Right. There was one word. But, um, uh -uh. Wrong. No, okay. we had we we had it all. So yeah. it was literally just one concurrent. So you know what I think I might need to do? We might need to find the word. Uh, no, I don't know if <laughs> the, the, the I don't know if the policy actually made it up on the site. So we'll just we'll check it out. Okay. Yeah, because I looked at our policy and that policy, and it was like uh, very very different. But I'll just take another look. Yeah. So thank you for pointing that out. Uh, that's awesome. Okay. Um, CPAC Excellence Award we talked about and office staff. So I think that's it. Did anyone else have any any other uh, thoughts? Yeah, um, I have any idea what the website's going to be back up. What or website? Is it not Who's mine? down? Yeah. Thank you, Michael. Um, <laughs> are you serious? Because I'm looking for the agenda and it says sorry, the page is inactive or protected, so it's not published. Okay, let's. Um, I didn't know that, so let's. Uh, I'll take a look at it after after the meeting. Yeah, I can see everything, so I wouldn't have noticed that. Yeah, because you're an administrator. No, I'm not sure if they tried out too well. No, I think you might have an old link or something. Maybe. Yeah. Because like the, maybe it's the link that's on the town page. Yeah. Right. That one takes you there. Oh yeah, the, so it's yeah. so we have to make sure we fix the town website. Yeah. Okay, but thank you, Michael. Again, thank you. And I'm sorry, but I'm going to need those paddles to get my heart going again. But I appreciate that. These are. I know your favorite. Yeah. <laughs> All of a sudden, I felt like my blood pressure. Okay, all right. Good. That makes sense. Can I just mention a few things? Of course. I just wanted to say in the um, I'm a big reader consumer media and um there have been a lot of articles lately about mental health and students and teachers and just the teachers are saying this year has actually been worse the worst year worse than the covid years because of the repercussions and the follow and it's just as we all know nationwide yeah. um, so just getting you know i know we spend a lot of time on social emotional and we hired um staff and i think we do a great job of trying to Remediate me, me, but um, it's just you know one of those ongoing educational concerns. And I think we have a great, great resources. And I encourage everybody to reach out to a trusted teacher, staff member if they're having any difficulties or problems because the staff here is wonderful and they will help you as much as they can. Follow up. Perfect. I think to echo what Daniel said earlier um, about the teacher appreciation week and. Um, you know, at Chandler today we did this breakfast, and it's like little things. But I think a little goes a long way, and um, it is just like small precedents to and, and names of the big words and whatnot. But I do think through time, that particularly from like the parent community and whatnot, that they're appreciated, and that what they're doing is all in one good gender. And so, absolutely. Well, I have something much lighter. I need to transition. 
put it sorry. Um, so I was as we're spending more time out about outside for the spring on the fields, I was just curious if as a school committee, some of the fields aren't quite up to par. Um, and I was just wondering budgetarily wise, is there anything we could do or is it our responsibility, like who to talk to? Because there was just for the softball field, for example, it desperately needed a little, it desperately needs some TLC. And I know everybody works really hard. Um, so I don't think that's the case, but even the tennis courts are in disrepair. So I know we're doing the big sports complex, but I feel like we need, and this might be an agenda item for later or something for the athletic advisory committee, but I think we need to do an assessment of all our fields and what can be done to bring them just to their glory. Because I think about like um, pride of ownership, is that the right word, phrase? Uh, sure. And I just feel like this is our town and we want to represent ourselves in the best manner. And when I see weeds on the infields of the softball field, I mean, it is the JV, but still, um, I'd like to see it as best possible. Did I say that? You said it. I think that uh, there's been some challenges about who's responsible for which field in terms of rec and school department. And I think that's one of those fields that's in that gray area. So I really, I didn't think of the um, athletic advisory committee, but uh, I think that we have rec representation on that committee. Okay. And so it might be a really great place for us to really delineate who's responsible for the field because I know that our grounds crew that we have, which is a tiny ground crew too, mm -hmm. in the district work really hard, especially on a nice day when we have no rain coming down to get the field done in line. Um, and we do have a new, um, we're going to try a new field lining process that will hopefully save a lot of time so that it will enable our ground crew to get out there and be able to be back with more detail and to um, get out there. But I think that JV softball field is in a gray area of who whose jurisdiction it's in. Yeah. So I think it's a continued conversation because I totally agree that when we visit other schools and you see beautiful fields, whether it's JV freshman or varsity, and you come back to ours and we have to be growing on a softball in fields where they're not supposed to be anything sprouting, it doesn't look as though we're um, treating our fields and trying to make them as beautiful as they can. So I think um, it's definitely worth a further conversation that I think you're right. Um, and I think some fields are better tended than others. We want to make sure they're all in the best shape. And I just, I was just gonna say, I think it should be like an ongoing thing so that even with our turf um, remodel or I don't know the right word, but yeah. with what we're doing with the turf replacement, I feel like we need to make sure we're ongoing, keeping up with it. So it looks great all the time. I would be unrealistic, but that's my, that's my, that's my goal. No, I have been asking about the softball fields for about 10 years. So. And yeah, I mean, while I'm here, I'm I might as well say it. Yeah. Someone brought up um, the softball field does not have lights and the girls may want to have a night game. So just going to throw that out there too for the party. So. Go ahead. Laurel. No, I was I, I was starting to think it's, I, I'm not quite there yet with my with my crew in terms of just my knowledge about the fields, um, other than getting to keep some some fast and furious kids. But I did sign up and then could not attend the Alden outdoor classroom cleanup. And I just I'm starting I'm wondering if there's a way because to me um, I remember being a member of a team. There were moments where you took ownership of your field. Is there a way, you know, for the advisory committee to think about having the teams um, own, and I don't mean like feeding and queen feed. I, just, I mean, I mean like just kind of having that, it's their field, they own it, maybe a little bit of kind of community building or team building around the kind of basics of it, or even just understanding or helping whoever is responsible for doing those kind of more involved tasks. Um, and I think it would, it would provide an opportunity for some community engagement and, and also just um, pride and ownership on the part of those who need to feel and maybe a little bit of recognition about the work that goes into these things. And it could be a collaboration because I didn't think about the boosters too, but yeah, boosters, yeah. athletic advisory, and then rec department. That's all I had. That's great. You can do it. Okay. Uh, all right, so uh, next order of business is unfinished business. And so um, we've got subcommittees and liaison appointments. 
So I, um, I will start with a motion. I move that the school committee adopt a school and program liaison structure for 2022 to 2023. All right, so we can discuss. And um, I'll recognize myself because I brought it up. Um, so uh, a, cu a couple things. Um, I was thinking that um, we, we've done we've done liaisons ever since I've been on school committee, and you can see what the last year's liaisons were on page 13 of the, the packet. And um, it, it sort of got me thinking that it might be interesting to consider um, revising the structure of how we do liaisons a little bit so that we think of, um, yeah, you guys are okay. Oh, you know what? I can throw this up on the screen too. Yeah, that would be that would, Would that be helpful? <laughs> yes, I need it. That would be helpful. Worried. That's why I spent eight hours today trying to get this map to work. Okay, mm -hmm. good. All right. So, <clears throat> so this is what I am proposing with a couple of added suggestions that were brought up to me by a teacher today, which is not really, really um, made a lot of sense. But at any rate, philosophically, what I was wondering is, could we consider, instead of doing liaisons to like, you know, committees and councils, could we think about assigning a liaison to what you could consider a program or a topic area? So, um, you know, for example, uh, every year you like doing the Dunham Scholarship, yeah. right? <laughs> and I don't think we have a um, liaison for DEF. I don't think that's not, I know that's not on the list, right? I don't think we have a liaison for boosters. That's like not on the list either. So it sort of got me thinking that looking at it by council and committee is sort of imperfect because those are always sort of going to have ebbs and flows. We're going to be adding new committees and taking committees and stuff. And it's like lots of new travel. At the same time, um, I don't, I think we may be missing an opportunity to develop subject matter expertise. So if, Kelly wanted to do, for example, scholarships and fundraising, that would include the Dunham Scholarship. It would include her keeping an eye on what Jill and her great, you know, colleagues are doing on DEF. Uh, it would give you a pipeline into building relationships or, you know, maintaining relationships with boosters and other stuff. And you could do, uh, whoever wanted to do that, could just build those relationships, and I would just call it episodic report. It's not anything that like we're expecting on a regular basis, but you know, when something comes across your radar that is related to scholarships and fundraising, you'd be on the agenda and be able to talk about some of the good work that those guys are doing. So it's kind of like an idea around programs instead of you know, you know, committees and and councils. So that was that uh, top row. Before I get to the second row, I want to um, really show some real gratitude to. Uh, her name is Kate Bono. Is Kate Bono? Kate Bono. Kate Bono. I always cook in classes on the wrong slide, but Kate Bono. So Kate uh, saw the packet and she was like, oh, I, I was reviewing the packet for the meeting. She was already like all in my good graces. I'm like, you're getting it. <laughs> and, and so she said, she's like, you know, she, she said, I was reviewing this, this stuff. And she said, would it be interesting? She said she would recommend instead of limiting athletics to athletics to do something like athletics, performing arts, and student engagement. Because she was saying, like, you know, we do and we do music, we do art, we do all those really important things. Uh, and she said, we also have co-curriculars and extracurriculars that could be put on the bucket of student engagement. And so thanks to Kate, I would recommend that we, um, if we adopt this structure, we just revise athletics to be athletics, arts, and student engagement. So we have someone in charge of what building relationships and network. So um, I want to get to the second row, but any questions on the first row? Any thoughts? Kelly, yeah. Do we have, and I should know this my job, a school committee representative on the athletic advisory committee? I was just asked about that today. Yeah, if you look at page 13, I, I think that's... Julia. It was Julia. Yeah. He would say because would it be the same person or no? I guess. Yeah. Well, I would say that, that whoever is... Okay. Yeah, I mean, I would say okay. that if you're on athletics, then you'd be... You'd do it all. You'd do, yeah. Okay. But, but, you know, it's a great question, and it's a great point, because when you say sort of do it all, I think one of the other sort of soft, unspoken kind of norms about being a liaison 
is that you got to go to all the meetings. And I don't think you do. First of all, we don't. <laughs> I know that I don't. Yeah. Um, so I think it's it's sort of like more achievable um, and it sort of like lends up the bandwidth to just say, look, I'm the liaison for this topic area. So, you know, I may go to a meeting from time to time. If I can't make a meeting, I'm going to call the chair of that committee and, you know, find out what was going on, share stuff that's going on in the school committee and things that I'm hearing that could inform that committee. So, and then I would hope it would go the way. other way. I mean, the important thing to me is that, right, that, that if there's a person who is your, your liaison. So I don't think that we can go. I think when we when we talked about this, it was this overwhelming kind of, oh my goodness, this is this is untenable for, for most people who are to, to be able to make all the meetings, the school committee and all those things. So yeah. it's right. So exactly. So I think this allow, this is much more realistic. And I think more importantly, it allows it to be a two-way system where it's not necessarily, I, my hope is that we communicate in a way that's not just on the school committee members to reach out and gather information, but that those individuals who have something to share or important to bring or want brought to the attention, that it's done that way so that it doesn't, it goes through the right channels. They have a person. They, they know who to talk to. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think that's a that's a great thing. So just for an example, I'm the school wellness liaison, and I think I've been to one meeting. Mm -hmm. However, I talk to Beth a lot, and she sends me the minutes of the meeting. And if I have anything to follow up with her, I'll either email her. We actually had a quick little meeting um, just to touch base on some things that you know I wanted to share with her. So I think it's a great idea, and I think it's easily having that communication and having that one person definitely can keep you in the know of what's going on. Mm -hmm. so I think it's great. Yeah, it's great. I mean, it's, it creates some sort of shared accountability between us and people that we are with those relationships. So uh, should we do that row first? Well, I, why, don't I, why don't we talk about the, the, the school programs okay. too, and then we can, we, you know, possibly we can sort of adopt the framework and then we can do another motion to assign the people. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, so the second row is uh, what I would call um, school liaisons, and it's interesting. If you go back to page uh, 13, we had a an open cell for school council liaison, but it never got it never got filled. Um, and I think that when we talked about it last year, we had added that, but it just didn't it didn't go anywhere. Um, I think they were all not making the same. Oh, that's that's that, that could be it. But you know, like to, to sort of underline the point on the first row, to assign one person to like school councils, I don't know if that would really be important. So yeah. So I um, I was thinking that we could assign a school committee, one school committee member to each school slash school council. And Laurel put it better than I could. There's uh, there's there's just two-way dialogue. Yeah. around what's happening on the school council, what's happening with us in order to inform and in some cases delegate stuff to school council that's not in our purview. You know, I made a huge mistake in the last meeting by putting something on the agenda that's really not on our, um, you know, it's not it's not in our set of responsibilities on the, the early school announcement stuff. But that is something that I think, you know, principals own, principals should consider. Principals make considerations with the advice of their council. And so I think it would help us to uh, foster a deeper, more meaningful relationship with each school and each school council if we assign one school committee member to, to, each, to each school. Okay, awesome. All right, so why don't we, why don't we, um, I'll, I'll uh, so, so the motion is to adopt a school and program-based liaison structure. Can I entertain a motion for that? I move that school committee assign the following school and program liaisons. All right, so we'll, so that that we no, you just said oh. so moved. <laughs> so moved. Okay, can I get a second? Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Okay, Aye. so we've adopted the structure. So now, uh, can I have a motion to uh, assign the fall? No, oh, so we can actually, so yeah, so I, I move that school committee assign school and program liaisons to its members. So, all those in favor? <laughs> okay, so now we can discuss. So, all right, so um, now it, it, I have it on page 11. We can just, all we would do is change athletics to athletics, arts, and student engagement, right? And now all we need to do is, um, is, is, is 
say where we want to go. Uh, I will say that I would refuse myself from doing curriculum or special education. The reason being is that my job outside of school committee um, is to work with education companies that do curriculum and stuff. And so I just can't, I don't want to like play in that sandbox. Um, and then I'll say one more thing and then I'll turn it over to you guys. But I was just thinking that for legislative and extra district, so legislative and extra district to me means things like town officials, school, school select board, and extra district is stuff that sort of like is outside of our district and sometimes out of our town. So I was thinking that the chair could do that. And believe me, one of the extra district things is the Pilgrim Area Collaborative. And you do need to have a school committee member. It's typically the chair on that. And it's a great thing. It's just a lot of time. You guys have to So um, I would take legislative and extra district if that's, if that's okay. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, okay, so you guys want to start with, and is there anything you guys want to ask anything? I just want to ask that um, having a school committee liaison for the school council, I think will be really important as we work through the budget process because we have such an early budget process that if you have that relationship and you're attending the school council ahead of when we start to present our proposed budget to you, and then once you have the proposed budget, the, the months in between November and January when we have the hearings are really important to get out and get the message of whatever situation we find ourselves in. And I hope we find ourselves in a situation where they're telling us in the town that we can not only have level service, but we can look at our needs moving forward. But I think that the more outreach we have, and I know <clears throat> the business administrator and myself have visited um, all the PTA meetings and all of the um, school council meetings, but I'd love for that to be a joint effort between all of us because I think the budget is just such a huge part of what we do to tell the story of the district and what our needs are. And if we can just be really familiar with the budgetary needs of the individual schools we represent, that would be great. Awesome. Cool. Great. Very good. Uh, so where do you guys want to start? We've started. We can do both all at the same time if you want, because I've got it all just listed first by schools and programs. Um, so does anyone have deep burning I, desire to do certain things? I'd like to do special ed, athletics, performing arts, student engagement, and the DEI, and all the I mean, I'm assuming more than one of us are going to be doing a lot of these. So, uh, okay. Oh, so you just have one, but one I do have to. Okay. Right. No, I we would can have, have two. We, well, hang on. Yeah, we, we're going to have to have more than one. So, you know, there's only five of us in this. So. No, but you only want one member per per session. I, well, no, that's up for that. Yeah, there's two listed. I mean, that's up, that's up for debate. I um and it's up for discussion. Why don't we why don't we discuss can we go I one at a time it. and see who wants to do each one? Sure. Yeah. Can so we step we stick it with one? Well, why don't we what maybe we can have that discussion as we go along? We can well, say how we I, I nothing is set in stone. Yeah, I was okay. thinking that a program liaison would be one per and a school liaison would be one per, but that that's why we're here. <laughs> so like right. it's not like you know. And I think yeah, I mean I think for Okay. Yeah. All right. Curriculum. So why don't we start with big things? Why don't we start with curriculum? I, I would be interested in curriculum. You'd be interested in curriculum. I would be interested in curriculum. Okay. Fine. We yeah. had. To, we've always had. Two. Not too problem with that. Okay. Yeah. And what I was going to say is, there's something to be said for sharing, but also um, historical knowledge, because everybody's kind of on a different term, right? Yeah. So it would be nice to have two, so that as things potentially turn over in the future, that it's not. That is a really good point. And we're usually reviewing more than one curriculum area at a time. So if we were doing technology and history, because if you look on the curriculum review, we have more than one content area being reviewed. So it might be nice to split up because there's different meetings for each one. That's great. Share, share the share the value. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. yeah share, and share the workload. That's good. Yeah. Okay. So KB and KC for curriculum. Cool with that? Yeah. All right. Um, special education. Both you guys would like to do that. Yes. Is anyone is that cool with that way? A B and K O. I don't think that logic one is kids. Okay. Um, uh, health and wellness. I'm interested in that. You're interested in health and wellness? Is anyone is that cool with everybody? I feel like I know you know, arm wrestling I know or something. I it's just like I, no, I mean I'm yeah, I, I I'm still thinking. Yeah, I mean, you can always what, maybe just jump on maybe a 
Yeah. You want to jump onto that? Well, no, not yet. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hold your fire. Yeah, I know, right? Well, you know, this this one has veal from She's chicken farm. Like, I want to get out of here. Like, it's something down. Chicken, chicken cutlet. Yeah, Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday. No, I didn't make it. Oh, I made it oh, it's on so. Sunday. I had shipped it to Sunday. Okay. Famous for her chicken cutlet. And her meatballs. Oh, my God. Hold on. Be bringing that in there? <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of chicken that was fried for an entire <laughs> Maybe the last year from our family is like a country dessert. I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We've got the tables. <laughs> I, I can't wait to see this in the minutes. Um, yeah. <laughs> Kristen O'Connell, family of 130 is great for um, So, health, health and well, wellness. Uh, Kelly is interested in that. Yeah. Shall we keep moving or? Just, yes. Yeah. Okay. yeah. All right, uh, athletics, art, student engagement. Uh, yeah, I'll go ahead. I'm interested in that. Yeah, that's probably, that's, I think, the big one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Expanding, so. So KO and LD. No, no, it's PC crossover. Um, diversity, equity, and inclusion. Uh, all right, yeah. Oh, I'm happy with it. So that would be KB and KO. Well, Kelly has three too. Oh, you are. Yeah. Oh, and I'm not. Oh, geez. Well, you might have. I might that have off. to be done. <laughs> well, that's the thing. Like, I could give up the because I always do that scholarship. Well, that's I'm happy. Say, yeah, I can jump in. So why don't we go through it? And see if All right. Like some balance. Yeah. yeah. Right. I I I would love to do scholarships and fundraising, and I'd love to have someone join me if you want to. Do you want to take over the Andy Blue Dom this year? Sure. Okay. Is that okay? I mean, would you rather do scholarships? It's fine. Wait, I've done don't get it. that aggressive. Do you want you want? I'm not being okay. aggressive. <laughs> no, I've done it for years. It, have, it's fun. Have at it. No. How about okay? Great. How about this? How about I do scholarships and because I don't want to put too much on your plate. How about if I do scholarships and fundraising, but you do not? Okay. Because it's like a legacy thing. Where do you like want to have um, Kelly kind of pass the torch yes. because there's some pretty important details to it that um, if you want to yeah. join in, you took a training this year. Yeah, we can do it together. Like Didn't I'll I do it the first year because you couldn't make it. Isn't that the one where we go and we give some of the awards out and stuff? On oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I did that. Remember? You 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 yeah you were also because Lisa first sends year. numbers and oh I forget it. Okay. Yeah. Like newbie, I was like an idiot. Okay. So, oh, and you went to awards night. So yeah, I went to awards night and I physically hand out the check. I physically handed out the check. Awesome. Yeah. It's, awesome. Check. Yeah. it's fun. Yeah, it's fun. But if you <laughs> want to, I, I'm not. I'm happy to pass. Pass the torch if you want to take that on. Is what I'm saying. Why, okay. Why don't we both do it? Okay. Okay. Doesn't it be fifty fifty? And then I'll be done. Both <laughs> Unless you want to do scholarships, it's all right. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Okay. No, I scholarships. What is that? We'll see. Right. Boosters yeah. and stuff. Yeah. 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 I mean, I love this. This is like, the, this is like a, a company. <laughs> I'm thinking of these like projects. Like, you know what I mean? You, yeah. You know, so, and I think the PTA should fall under like some kind of fundraising. PTA, I think you're right. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. No, I think they do. I would, but I, well, I want them with school council too. I mean, they should right. yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, I think we should be going to their committee as well as we're going to their PTA. Okay. But that's another discussion. Mm -hmm. Not all of them. All right, so let's just review. So curriculum is KB and KC, SPED is KB and KO, health and wellness is KB, athletics, arts, and student engagement is KO and LD, DEI, KB and KO, scholarships, KB and MG, legislative, and extra district MG. Is that right? Yeah. Um, I think some did say special ones. KB and KO. KC and, and, and KO. I'm writing first. first and All right. I wrote this one. There's a lot of K's. Yeah. There's a yeah. lot of K's. There's three. There's like a ton. And then we have Dr. Klingerman. We have Dr. Oh, K. DK. Yeah, Mr. Yeah. K. That's another one. Yeah. DK. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That was pretty much being hired. Yeah. Don't take somewhere. All right. Matthew Nadler, do you have a K in your name anywhere? There's a K. No. All right. Don't worry. Trying to bring everybody in. <laughs> um, okay, so right. shall we move to school? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, let's go. So we want to start with the youngins. Chandler? I'll be Chandler. Do we want people not 
or not it's discussed it. We don't want our kids in the house. That's a good idea. We don't yeah, want our kids in the house. I thought that well, we, we did about. talk about you guys it. Did, yeah, I, I, I would want to, I want to think about that. Um, only because, well, there are pros and cons. Mm -hmm. I, I think we should think about it, talk about it. All right, let's talk I about mean, it. first of all, can we even do it? To say that we would be on something that your kids want. I mean, I have kids in three of these and will for the foreseeable future. Yeah. So, well, I only have so one. you take that high school. You don't have any problems with someone, someone else. Three. They're going to have all three, too. Right. But I think I you have to understand what is the role of the liaison. Yeah. Like, do you have actually input into changes of policy, practice, school functioning, et cetera? Or are you there as an informational person? Like, that can help you define what you can and can't. Like, do you feel comfortable being able to Yeah, that's how I yeah. understood it, was that we are. So it's liaisons. It's, it's like, yeah. you're, you're listening. Yeah. Right. To yeah. me, that's the role, which is why yeah. Yeah. it's strengthening the relationship. Yeah. It's understanding what's going on so that things and are on our radar and vice versa. Like power of school council to take. I mean, personally, I don't see, like, given that that is what I think the role is, liaison. I, personally, I wouldn't see a problem with it. If I was a parent or something, that was on school liaison. So I'm not making those decisions. I'm not even advising on those decisions. Yeah. I'm just. Yeah, no, I was much less concerned about conflict of interest and more concerned about kind of relationships and bonding and understanding, thinking that it's actually beneficial to have a kid. But I can also see the other side of that where, you know, you're, you might be, again, if you're, you're just a liaison for this and um, your knowledge and experience with the school, which again, if you're on the other end of that spectrum, you've had it too um, already as opposed to never having been. Um, I don't Jesus, want to for you to um, meet other parents not in your kids' peer group, which you might know at your own school more so, because you're representing all pre-K through 12. If you think about it, like for Kelly, it might be that she doesn't have as many connections with Chandler right now, but it might be nice for you to hear some of the Chandler parents' concerns because you kind of, your kids have gone through that school. It's just another way right. to meet more people. Yeah. You want to see how it divides up? Sure. Chandler? Anybody? Well, I don't know. I think we have to decide how we want to set their conference. Because I'm kind of like, volunteer for Chandler. <laughs> well, I don't think it matters. I think that's yeah. what we're. Well, I think yeah. like that's a valid point. Like I'm, I'm out of touch with Chandler now. Yeah. Because my youngest is in middle school. I've been through all the schools, mm -hmm. and and I used to go to school committee member. I would go to Alden when. My kids were in Alden and talk about the budget and go to PTA meetings and there's a comfort level and you know everybody right. and the parents trust you. Right. That's, so that's what I'm about. Yeah, I, I can see it both ways. I don't know. Well, and is it do we are we strategic if ideally we have to sit down and have a parent meeting um, I you, wouldn't make I would pull the both there and say let's not make a perfect enemy. And we just say like let's just pick a school that we feel like we'd be comfortable in. And let's see how it goes. This isn't like a job box. Yeah, I agree. I think it's a really yeah. big decision. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. Really like no one's going to sleep today. I think we can always switch too. Yeah. I does it work? Yeah. I have kids that are in school. For yeah, it doesn't really matter. I mean, that's yeah. exactly it's, yeah, for yeah, me. Right. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah, you could do any. I don't know where they are. Drew Bali School and having children in the schools, right? Right, yeah. Right now. I don't mind taking the middle school. I have a son, my son is in the middle school. I don't like it. It's not like I'm jumping into the middle school because it's the middle school. I was going to do all of them. And I'll take high school. I'll have a high school. I'm going to do Chandler. I was just going to say, and there's five of us. So yeah. So go to all of them. No, <laughs> yeah. All right. So Chandler is going to be KC. Alden is going to be KO. Middle is going to be MG. And high school is going to be KB. Do I have the last? Do I have the case right? Yeah. I got Katie, Kristen, Matt, Kelly. Yeah. Yeah. Going names, dude. And where's Laurel? I know. Laurel hasn't. Well, there's five of us in the middle school. Do you so. want to not do one as a chair because we have to um, legislate it next to the district? I was actually mm -hmm. thinking the same. Because I was thinking, I was going to, I was going to. Totally gonna, speak in my language. You're taking stuff go, off my Yeah, head. I was going to say I'm in the middle I think school. maybe. You I think that's a good idea. I mean, I'm just kind of. You can go to intro. I'm still a new job, but I. Laura, would you mind doing that? I would love to. That was actually what I was going to volunteer both for you. Yeah. You speak up. Oh, this Are is you all okay, Katie? I got to get too much. Yeah. 
So let's just take one more scan of, of page 13 and make sure that um so uh actually before we scan page 13 um so without going too deeply into it i'll, I'll do that in a couple minutes but the last row the bottom row is uh, our potential subcommittee i say potential because right now technically we have one subcommittee we have a policy subcommittee that is me and julia right now we do have a DTA like com committee. Like I don't know. Like it's it's not. We we I get we I guess we have a DTA subcommittee, right? If you look on page thirteen, DTA negotiations are yourself and myself. Well, that's for the contract. Just for just the for the contract. contract. So yeah, what I was thinking that yeah. with, with that what I was thinking that I would like to talk in some depth about in the next meeting, if it's okay with you guys, is the prospect of introducing. A salary, like a more of a standard salary and negotiations subcommittee, which I don't want to talk about tonight because it's not on the agenda, and a business and finance subcommittee. I don't want to talk about tonight because it's not on the agenda. But I, I propose that we table that those two subcommittee discussions for the next meeting. But since we already have a policy subcommittee, I would like to just get, wrap that up tonight if that's okay, because I don't think we want the policy subcommittee to go away. Um, and policy maintenance is like super, super important. Um, so I'm happy to stay on the policy subcommittee. It's not really a heavy lift. Um, I'm not trying to sell it, but I kind of am. You know, so like we, so for example, Julie and I had two, I think we had two policy subcommittee meetings last year to talk about um, public comment and, and kindergarten, like kindergarten age stuff. Um, pretty quick. You, you basically you talk about it. You got to talk about it in public. You have to, it's like a public meeting. So you got to go through this whole thing with Lizzie Watt where you go to town hall and post the thing. It's public, so you can be. And you have like a little agenda. It's not anything as, you know, huge as this. And, you know, you do what you have to do. So, like last year, we did kindergarten age eligibility. And we talked about it with some of the administrators. And we came to a conclusion. We wrote the policy and typically you, you lift the policy from an ASC and then make some tweaks to it or not. And then we, I think we have the attorneys take a quick look at it, make sure that it was up to snuff. Then we bring it to a school committee meeting, present it to you guys and we all vote on it. So it's not, it's not huge. And actually, it's actually kind of fun to see how the sausage is made that we have to make the policy. I'm happy to do that with you. Nice. Yeah. Is that cool? All right. All right. So we have very good. Very good. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you spent enough time. I was going to say I had you at I low, but I don't think there was a lot of interest when you see that I was going to be on it. So that's fine. So, uh, all right. Did you say? I don't even know. Hello. Hello. No, I had me at hello. I was just waiting for you to be done speaking. Yeah, well, that's as you said last time, that never happened. I try not to interrupt. Okay. MG and KB policy subcommittee. Okay, great. We might have to go to Kelly. I'm in the KB. That's why I'm staying in the KB. So I'm going to say KB and take care of myself. You're not gonna I'm running <laughs> first. Okay. All right. So I'm going to I'm gonna go through this list. I'm gonna make it a motion. Oh, okay. So I move that the school committee assign the following school and program liaisons for 2022-2023. Chandler School, Katie Cleary, Alden School, Kristen O'Connell, Duxbury Middle School, Laurel Beacon, Duxbury High School, Kelly Bresnahan, curriculum, Kelly Bresnahan and Katie Cleary. Special Education, Katie Cleary and Kristen O'Connell. Health and Wellness, Kelly Bresnahan. Athletics, Arts, and Student Engagement, Kristen O'Connell and Laurel Deacon. Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, Kelly Bresnahan and Kristen O'Connell. Scholarships and Fundraising, Kelly Bresnahan and Matt Amino. Legislative and Extra District, Matt Amino. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes by that is Yahtzee. Okay. Um, Can I just ask a quick question? Yeah. Danielle, do you know if there are like the athletic advisory um, uh, uh, advisory council? Are there councils councils or groups for performing arts and there's music boosters? Okay. And there's athletic boosters. Um, I don't know if drama has something separate. Okay. Uh, we used to have a, uh, well, uh, Rama, I think it's a lot of it's a place for kids and music, 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 
smaller because it's a very small group. I think it's only like three or four of them. I think because it's the coming year, they're just looking to like disassemble that and make it more into just like parents volunteering events. So I think there's lots of features for that. I can try and reach out and find how we how we can help. That's good. I was just curious. No, Michelle Tackett was running something for um from they tried to have up with the names that we kind of get to fund them. Well, but that's why I don't know if that would fall in the fundraiser to get future for the substance for that. So, uh, or like, so well, I'll, I'll say, we, yeah, and okay. I think that's what they do warrant some digging about, yeah. you know, because again, that student engagement to me, which I think is probably slightly what Kate Sano was talking about. I mean, the number of people in the groups in the middle school yeah. and high school, we're not going to be able to necessarily obviously have intel on every single one, but we should know what they are. Doing and you know, we keep our, yeah. And I think if you are uh, make it known, we make it known that you're the liaison to co curriculars and athletics. It's also on co curricular and athletic advisors and coaches to say, We're doing something really special, yes. and we'd love to have you come so that it's not just you trying to figure out where you can go, but Absolutely. also being invited. Yeah, or if there's a question or concern to be able to know who they can reach out to. Yeah, Absolutely. Thank you. Far out. Okay, well. Feel satisfied after unfinished business. Okay, so uh, new business. Jill Cooney is like chomping at the bit to approach the bench. So our next item of business on uh, is Duxbury Education Foundation 2021-2022 with Jill Cooney. Well, welcome, Jill. Thank you. It's a wonderful being here. Thank you for having me. Really appreciate being invited and making my new org chart. It's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> and I think any communication and like Dr. Clayton was saying earlier with the strategic planning work that the more we can meet face to face and have discussions around creating an area for our students to study, the better. The more we can talk. And she said we all are on the same page. We all have the ultimate goal of creating that graduate to be successful at that. So I appreciate you opening the door for us to be a part of that. Before I get into the grant process, and the BFI2 would like to echo the sentiment to thank the teachers, the administration, and all the staff on behalf of RBF for their work day in and day out. As Kelly mentioned, it has been a trying year for one of the few teachers in the class. That it, it is more difficult than even during COVID and pivoting during that. So I appreciate everyone that's shown up day to day because I know that's a difficult time. The students appreciate it. the Duxbury Education Foundation. In a position to give money back to the organization and the grant office for the school, we look forward to continuing into the future. Um, this year alone, we've donated $59,677.20 back to the school through 10 to 11 grants. And what I love is that it's touched every school. It's touched Alden, it's touched Chandler, it's touched the middle school, it's touched the high school. And it's through those teachers and staff taking the time to write the grant, get creative, innovative for our students. And it really does make an impact on the, on the teachers and access to innovative ideas. So we appreciate all the donors and our sponsors. Our most recent campaign, Cancer the Fall, raised close to $35,000 that we can continue to fund these grants. Um, and what's wonderful is that they've really touched all areas of the, of the school. We, our largest grant was for the STEM program at the middle school, and the robotics team um, was for, I believe, 78 Lego like track robotics. And that really gave access and new technology to all of the students. And that was able to invited them in to launch and succeed and it created collaboration within teams of people who just kind of work together, these respectful materials and the technology fine. So we have one grant that really has had an impact on the students. Um, we also at one point funded STEM help for the first grade classes at Chandler. And the third grade class team teachers, Mrs. Newley and Mrs. Hamlin at um, third grade have really worked hard and gone above and beyond for a couple different grants. Um, I know Laurel Deacon just spoke about the outdoor classroom and the cleanup behind Alden, and that was a lot of work for Mrs. Newman and Mrs. Hamlin that really 
benefited all of the middle school, high school, and all the students. It's a wonderful institution for all the teachers and students to really be in it and after school. And as that the community has stepped in to provide new rooms and help clean up and order to do things that that grant. I think I even saw Nicole, the science teacher, post something with her work outside, taking her middle school grade at classroom up there, and then at the library of Austin, teacher has used it as well. So we really like to see our grants in action. The other grants that Ms. Karen is been working on is they secured an oyster upweller that will be residing at the Maritime School, um, which they created a great partnership with. They did that through their own funding and their own donation, and then we provided books and field trips for them to go and create this curriculum that will hopefully roll out for all third grade classrooms that they can use in the summer. To take field trips, to really see what the life cycle looks like for an oyster, and to really be hands on. And like you were saying before, the partnerships in the community, collaboration are really where everything's at in our oyster. And they create resources to tap into and as we continue to open the lines of communication and access those resources, the better for everyone. Um, for the outdoor classroom, the Oyster Upweller, we've also provided some professional development um, at Alden for the teachers to access new techniques for kind of the gaps in learning as far as math. Um, so collecting and taking student data and looking at it and seeing what best practice to move and teach going forward. Um, at the eighth grade level, we've done a virtual field trip for students. Um, we've also just recently, with the ninth grade biology and after school, we've provided MIT DNA, RNA, protein synthesis manipulative for them to really look at um, DNA. And that was something that was, they were so thrilled to get. Um, they really were kind of looking for a few, but now that every class has access, that was an AP class, so that was We've also just recently funded the recess books for all of them so that all teachers have access to the books for their um, presentation and great common language that they can use throughout the school for social emotional learning. One other one, all of them we funded the stationary bike to be teachers put in for so that there's movement breaks to get that might not even be in PE at the time. There's place played around the building, they're used during PD. Um, they've been wildly successful so much that um, two graphics from the DSU reached out to see, you know, what what bikes are we using? Is you know a great fit for the children at our age group and you know hopefully they'll purchase them as well. So yeah, those are a few of the grants and we are in the process of collaborating. Level as well, and we hope that the $59,000 will go beyond 60 and give some new technology for the park department as well. Okay. I think that wow. the most important thing I know the grant process can be intimidating for teachers, and fortunately, we don't fund all grants. But I think one of the things that we really hope to do in the future is to collaborate and come up with an idea and to go back and forth and if we want to we can make it happen. And I think as many of you know, mm -hmm. and our criteria is just on our website for all of our funding. We are a volunteer board, it's evolving, so I like the community report that we have multiple people represented and talking so that it's a consistent language and things aren't lost from the review. Yeah, so I feel for it. Could you? Um, would you mind talking a little bit more about that for Vault? Because it's fascinating. I, I, I always forget like the specifics of it, but I love how you guys have a certain sort of um, sure. flow around how you do So this. we're a 21 member board. We're supposed to be a 21 member board. Yeah. At the current moment, we are hovering around 17 due to um, absences for different reasons, whether it's leaves of absence or family, personal reasons. So every year we, in theory, Bring on seven new members from yeah. the community um, through either people reaching out or word of mouth, and really, so it's two 
people that are invested in this community that want to put them in, that want to put them in town. And the expectation is that they can put them in meetings and that they have that outreach event, and then they kind of take ownership of either an event, um, finances, grants. So it is a team effort, and everyone reviews the grant and feels that the grant is, but everyone ultimately votes. Yeah, the way I've heard it is like when you start, you are, it's almost like a, it's like an in, did I hear, did I hear it right? It's like almost like an intern. Sure, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. the first year you shadow. And, yeah. and in theory, so the first year you're supposed to shadow, the second year you carry out your local police functions, and then the third year you're kind of like a mentor and you're there for yeah. months. Uh, unfortunately, because of the leave of absence and COVID, where for basically a year and a half, nothing really happened, yeah. it's been an interesting catch up. Like many organizations, it's less than in challenging positions where um, as it's my second year, but really like almost my first year, we right. wasn't as anything going on. So that's less less in a, a difficult position. But I think everyone is going to put the best effort they can. Everyone's aiming for the right goal. So that's right. Yeah. That's so we're right. hoping to get back up to date with our top one members to kind of really fine tune the whole more possibilities of each. That's great. And we've approved grants with this, like a majority vote yeah. type situation. Mm -hmm. so, so since I've been there. on, we just now talked to the police about this. If the grants process needs to be um, a set grant all year round long, and then just like an iteration, then we would go through all the grants and kind of like bring them over the night. And then mm -hmm. I've joined the board, we love to roll in grant process. So it's basically open from like August. To end of May, June, and then we accept and review grants as they come in based on our grant process. And um, so the uh, the answer to the call was like 35. Yeah, somewhere the year around before there. we hit 60, close to 50, close to 50. Just for answer the call. Uh, just for answer the call, which was seen was was our highest yeah. ever. Yeah. Um, but this, so this year you did 60 years. all in. 35 came from it from answer the call. Oh, for our grant? Yeah. Oh, that's 35 is just what we raised. 59 is what we spent. We do have a surplus, currently have a surplus. Okay. So we extra funds on hand from year to year. Mm -hmm. And because 2020 and 2021, we didn't, there weren't as many grants because of COVID, I think it was around 13,900 that we wrote just based on what we received. And that we do have a surplus left of funds. Mm -hmm. um, most everything that we take in goes directly to the school. And people do, you know, we don't have very many other experiences. <laughs> yeah. And the other events that we do is the road race. The Fuller Funds is something that we started. We partnered with the work for Vestbury as the beach reservation has been very interested in partnering with the school on the curriculum as well. Um, just trying to kind of create those. So impressive. It is. Yeah. We couldn't. <laughs> you. Well, thank you. And, and those flippy ties were unbelievable. Oh, good. Thank you. Right. I remember you pulling out. Yeah. Oh, so I God. know it's like everything that we, we learned from all of our campaigns and different work for the present was passed on, as you all are. And I am lifelong learners, and you know, we see what works, what doesn't, and what's left. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Um, cool. Uh, so I see a huge check there. Do I oh, yeah. put that in my car? I don't know. Or what would happen? Yeah, I, I, at one point when I was perusing our old, old binders, somebody presented a check lens. <laughs> Amanda Crowley. But I have one. So if you need a photo op. So do we do like a photo op? Did you want to you do a photo op? You can. Sure. Oh, can we take okay. a short recess for a quick photo op and come right back? Yeah, I'm going to do a short recess and do a photo op with a big check. Yeah. Okay. We'll I can okay. leave it. You have to get in the photo. No, you got to be in the photo. You don't want to be in the photo? Oh, I don't want to. Do you want to take yeah, a picture? Be in the photo. <laughs> You're in the photo. After all, I represent everyone. Not, it's a team effort. All right, well, let's, let's do the photo op. <laughs> You can be in the photo. Yeah. You don't want to be in the photo? I'll go behind the chat. You don't want to be in the photo? I'll go behind the chat. Come on. It's a pretty big chat. Yeah, I'll have to. I want to be in the chat. Why don't I take it?
Yeah. You Mike, you gotta be in the photo. <laughs> Mike's like, oh my god, another picture I gotta be in today. Uh, <laughs> no, I don't feel like I don't feel a little bit. I know. You should be the same, right? Are you gonna do something? I got to be on my Okay, in here. So we, the last goals that we have, and I, I apologize, I probably should have included them in the packet, but we did have goals that were a little bit unusual because they were from 2020 to 2022. And I think one of the reasons why is just because of COVID, because the, the interruption during COVID, I think triggered some of the goals. And I probably should have put them in the packet. So, uh, however, um, what we were able to do um, was to uh, have each individual member uh, provide uh, what they thought would be worthwhile goals for the committee over the year. And uh, that's what you can see here on pages 14 through through 16. Um, so you, you, you're going to recognize your own language in here. I had asked you to, to put your goals in and also just put some rationale. Why, why is this goal important? Um, and then what we did, and I totally stole this idea from uh, Dr. Ruth, what's Dr. Ruth? Gilbert Whitner. Gilbert Whitner. So on strategic planning, uh, you know, she has us talk about sort of common themes that we see when I did some of So um, I had asked you guys to identify some common themes that you feel that each of you felt like you could, you could get behind. And um, that's what we're looking at now. So I kind of just try to color code it um, by essentially clustering. So there's 15 cells in the sheet, and each of you submitted three of your common themes, right? So each of your common themes is in here. All I did was I took your common themes that you submitted to me, and I color coded them. So the first column, everything in green, is budget related. So I'll just let you study it for a second. You'll see your own language when I try to change it. And then <clears throat> the second column, four of the things that were submitted were around school council. And then the third column, you can see three items in that orangey color there. They were essentially around communication. And then the white ones that are on the bottom right are just ones that weren't really in another, in another cluster. Yeah. Color coded in the folder. Like a shared or no, this is not in the packet, uh, but it'll be, okay. uh, I'll submit it to you guys after. Okay. Um, so I want to just like hold the discussion for 10. 
So I, the way I looked at it, you know, when I saw those, like to me, it's pretty cut and dry that the three sort of things that rose to the top were budget, school council, and communication. Um, and I just wanted to open up to the committee to to talk about as you reflect on that, and as you reflect on all of the goals that you submitted to me and that we looked at, you know, does that seem like it? Does that seem like it makes sense? Because we could do these, or we could do some things that are completely different. I think makes sense. Yeah. I do too. I mean, budget, obviously. It's one of our primary goals. And obviously, that was the one that everyone. Yeah. Everyone had the checkbox on on budget. Yeah, I think this the school council ties into what we just did with the group organization and our push in their role. So mm -hmm. I think it's a good I think that's an important one. So I agree with talk a lot about like the building based plan and sort of allowing other organizations to sort of share some of the responsibility of you know holding what's going on in the school. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I don't school council as the as headline um, is is right, but I think it's it's articulated about what that actually means in those goals. So as long as I mean, the goal can't be school council, right? But it's you know feed the school council and, and the goal is articulated around how we tell it. Yeah, so, that, so, that, so that's a great segue. So um, one thing we could do, and we probably shouldn't take a lot of time on it, um, is to come up to, in an agreement on what the goals really are. And of course, the goals have to be, so there's, this is a two-part, okay? What we could do tonight is we could come to an agreement on like high level, what are our three goals? And in the next meeting, we could come to a conclusion on how we do those goals and how we measure them. I think that, that would be like a, a long meeting tonight to try to do all that. Right? But in, in coming up with the goals tonight, the only thing I would suggest we think about is we've got to be realistic um, around like what we're responsible for. So, for example, one of the things is to elevate and improve the roles and responsibilities of school council. That's not our job to elevate and improve the roles and responsibilities of school council. We can't control the school council. What we can do is we can strengthen our partnerships with the school council so that there's mutual visibility into what each of our councils are doing so that they have a better understanding of what's on our radar and vice versa so that we can help each other out you know what i mean and help each other with i mean like so i'll i mean there's nothing right or wrong here i wrote the one that says um the the, the second from the bottom it says school council strengthen councils and community partnerships create a mutual assistance and sort of communication workflow around common interest. All I really mean by that is like help each other out and figure out how we can each do our work like more seamlessly and collaboratively. Um, so one thing that I would sort of suggest is that we've just got to be sort of realistic on like what's our job and what's not our job as we think about these goals. So maybe, um, I'm not going to do all the talking here, but maybe we start with budget. And would it be interesting to just like they study this for a moment or two and just think about what what is our role as it relates to the budget? Yeah. And you know, I think both of the budget potential goals there. Say a similar summary. I mean, really appropriate. Yeah, yeah, really appropriate. Telling the story, helping with community engagement. Um, sharing with all stakeholders, aligned with some of that school council work as well. You know, I think too, it's sort of like I'm thinking about what kind of how we did and just to kind of emphasize today. That first one to me is the goal, and then some of those things 
he does with what he has in his own story. So those are how we get there, right? Mm -hmm. um, the action steps. Yeah, right. So sure. so we can pull that language out. To me, that first statement. Not necessarily as much, but the point is that first statement is a little bit more concise and clear. Mm -hmm. You mean the increase between participation and engagement? Like, yeah. yeah, that's a good I mean, that's yeah. like high level. Yeah. Like yeah. That, that's the stated goal, and then we have to break that down and utilize the things that are outlined in those other components to determine how to do that. And certainly not all of them, but I'm cool with that. And, you know, if you guys want, I can just take, you know, take a headline from that, like maybe use that as the headline or something very similar to it. And then we would need a way to figure out um, between now and then how to get some either thoughts in our minds or some prep so that we can make next meetings productive and powerful. Today's also yeah. off of how do you know when you get there? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's so I think that's with the goal, I think is exactly the target that we're talking about today, but like what is what is the statement that says we've reached the goal or, or measure progress towards that goal? Right. Yeah, yeah. So I think you're right. I mean how and measurable. What's the measurable of success? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So the goal could be headline, we will do this by and we will measure our success by. I think that's really important. You're too today with important stuff that you're saying. I'm about to stop right now. I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. During, the, during the chart of course, one of the big things they said for the goals is make sure you're not making checklist goals, like completion goals, make sure they tie in kind of with the thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, school student performance and progress. So. Um, okay, so what about for what about for school counseling? Sort of keeping in mind what's in our control. Right. Well, I think that it's the one that you said, Hugo, like strengthening the partnership there, I think. And, you know, we've already started moving towards that with the campaign that's to come. But I think it, um, it should focus maybe around sort of that piece, in my opinion, too, mm -hmm. with like the creating like the communication workflow and ensuring that. Yeah. And there could be other measures. I mean, there could be other things that are associated. We might decide when we talk about the how and the measurable that you know the, the you know attendance, some sort of reporting that right now we get two reports from school council a year, yeah. which ends up mandating, right? Like for school improvement plans. So that no, so the, that's what Dorothy had shared with us. The school improvement plans don't need to be approved by school committee any longer. about um you know we hear a lot about what's the purview of the school committee it's not the purview yeah. and i think 
when I'm thinking about this and thinking about the relationship building and, and the liaisons and all of these things, you know, the, the things that are sort of the stated purview of the school committee are these big kind of high level things, right? But as I sit and I'm learning about kind of what we need to do and how we get there, this is the how we get there because I don't know how we as a school committee hold the district accountable to the strategic plan if we don't understand the school improvement plans, you know? So I, we don't have a role in building them or designing them or having input on the nitty gritty details. But if that constant line of communication isn't open, I don't feel like I will be equipped to do the, the role, to, to carry out the roles and responsibilities that are in fact in our purview. So if you're, if you're evaluating me and you know you had a hand in developing the strategic plan, knowing that our school improvement plans need to reflect the work to get us there, I think that um, you, you, I need to be accountable to the fact that the strategic plan goals by the administrators uh, and the teachers are within that so that you're, you're knowing and you're confident that we'll be able to reach those big picture goals because we have that chain of command of like how that work gets done. So right. you need to know how the plan was developed. You need to be a part of it. Uh, but you're not the one implementing it. Absolutely. Yes, and that's the difference. And I think that's important. That's something that we need to work on as a school committee in terms of our public relations and helping the community understand how that works. And to me, when we talk about relationship building and kind of reconnection and getting everybody, getting buy-in from everyone, these are the mechanisms to do that as opposed to like managing the process or, you know, um, building the plans or, or whatever. It's more just about all the doors being open and everybody kind of seeing how everything's working so you understand the big picture a little bit better when we get to the final place, which is here, where we have the big high level discussion. Um, but then that way the school committee can kind of address and speak to how the sausage is made and all those different components along with it. Mm -hmm. So I get it, school council is important, but it, it's hard to differentiate that from um, relationship building and communication mm -hmm. and having the liaison piece be part of that process or the, the intention of that process is mm -hmm. to build relationships and support the district in their goals of living waste management, which is what that's about. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anything else on school councils right now? Yeah. So good stuff to think about. Um, Still have about communication. So there's a couple things I'm reading in this one. Um, do you mind if I out you as being the first one that like, yeah. that's, that's yours, I think. Yeah. So um, the reason why I do that is say that is because one of these goals in here, in the aggregate goals, I think it's like a build upon approach to presentations. Um, and I think you you brought that up in the last time we meeting, right? Yeah. So um, with communication, I'm reading two things in communication. I'm reading, you know, how we communicate with the district in these meetings, um, and then I'm also reading into how we communicate with the uh, with the community. Um, and I just point that out as, a, as an observation. Do whatever we want. I mean, communication could be that too. Because I'll admit, I was thinking more about communication with the community than actually communicating with the district, but I really like what I'm reading <laughs> in terms of, you know. And I also think it's that. communication coming towards us. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Yeah, for sure. Well, and it's, it's, I, I think the reason I listed it that way when I was thinking about it was, again, that all of those lines of communication are open. So, between the school committee and the district, between the district and the community, or the school committee and the community, I guess, however you want to place those three in practice. But you know, those lines of communication between the three are, are important to know. So, <laughs> okay, with you guys, we can do a headline of communication that is, you know, indicative of or inclusive of way dialogue communication between us and the community, two-way dialogue between us and the district to help us get to a place where we're in a perfect position to help do our work, which is to advise the superintendent. 
decision to let you. Okay. This was a discussion. We don't know anything. What do you think? Awesome. <laughs> Jill, you got to start coming every day. Yeah. I won't even make you do public comments. I just, I just need your public comments every day. Okay, lastly, uh, um, I forgot one thing in my update, which is actually covered a little bit in my item there. The, I'm the second communication guy there. Um, so I just wanted to let you guys know that there has been some chatter at the town level, at the select board level, and with Rainy Reed around um, rehabilitating the town website. And there is some chatter on, as part of that rehabilitation, putting the town website and the school district website under a single platform. Because we share a resource with the town, we share our, our chief technology officer, Mike Woodford. And so he is very interested in um, you know, getting to a place where he can optimize the work that he's responsible for doing. And a big part of our organization is like sharing you know, technical resources. We may not end up sharing a platform, but we might. But I wanted to clue you guys into that because it has been in some discussions. So I did talk to Fernando Picard about it, and he has promised me that he's going to bring it up in a uh, in a um, select board meeting to the school. He's going to have Mike Woodford give him a quote around what it would cost to shift uh, the town and district to a new platform, and he appreciates some support from us and you to be at that meeting to advocate for it. Yeah. Um, so that was actually what I really wanted to when I said website update. So I think there's some really good stuff on the horizon. And I think it puts us in a really good position to, yeah. So, yeah, good. Jill, we are cooking with gas, Jill. Do you need your website redone? No, we don't. <laughs> All right, um, okay. <laughs> Good. Chris, it's tough crowd tonight. Yep. Large crowd. Okay, all right. <laughs> She's all right. starving. <laughs> yeah. I'm actually not. Okay, all right, good. Okay, good. <laughs> okay so um, is there any other I have I I am quite satisfied with this meeting, particularly that it didn't last two hours. So we're already making improvements, Mike. Is there anyone does anyone have anything that we forgot and uh, should we talk about that we're not talking about? Okay, with that, can I have a motion to adjourn? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. I'll always treasure. All right.